For preemptive therapy, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you wait until certain, uh, you wait for the positive test. Uh, we use viral molecular assay, which is uh, viral load, testing for viral load uh, by PCR uh, at certain cutoff. Every center has a little bit different cutoff, I would say. What we do at our institution uh, for high-risk patient, and we define high-risk patient, usually patient who received uh, cord blood a transplant or haploidentical transplant or mismatch unrelated uh, donor transplantation, uh, or patient who got ETG, uh, part of their conditioning regimen, uh, this patient, uh, we wait until the threshold of uh, 500 or above to start treatment. So any uh, positive test for CMV by PCR uh, at 500 international units per ml and above, we start treatment. For lower risk patients who are still recipient positive for CMV, but they may have received match-related donor transplant, they don't have graft versus host disease, they're not on high dose steroid, they need to receive T cell depleted agents. These patients, uh, we wait until the uh, until the viral load goes above a thousand IU per ml before we start uh, preemptive therapy. So there's two different uh, cutoff uh, for depends on the patient risk factors uh, for CMV uh, reactivation, progression, and and organ disease. Other centers may use lower threshold, uh, could be 250 IU per ml, or even higher threshold even for high risk patient. So there is no consensus over which at which threshold of CMV viral load you initiate treatment, it, it's all, you know, it's arbitrary. Uh, based on our experience and other uh, uh, expert experience, uh, that's how we define it in our institution. Low-level CMV reactivation uh, is a kind of uh, an issue for us because I think that in real life, we are over-treating patient with low-level uh, of reactivation uh, because in some instances we don't feel comfortable of observing and watching the patient until their viral load goes up higher. Sometimes we jump the gun and we start the treatment. We did a study actually and we didn't publish it yet, it's under review, where uh, we looked at this low level of reactivation, especially the one where you detect CMV in the blood but it's not quantifiable. Uh, or the one borderline around maybe 200 IU per ml or 300 IU per ml. And we observed this patient and we did a uh, early spot T cell assay looking for CMV specific T cell responses on this patient uh, to see if this can help us identify patient at risk for progression of this low level of reactivation. We found interesting results where uh, patient with high early spot T cell response, uh, meaning a positive uh, uh, early spot uh, test, uh, telling me that they have enough CMV specific T cells uh, circulating, these patients actually were protected against progression without treatment even. So this patient had kind of self-resolution of their viremia or the anemia without treatment. Patient with low T cell, uh, CMV specific T cell responses, this patient actually, uh, most of them, continue, uh, you know, uh, progress and had higher level of uh, CMV viral load uh, down the road and they had to be treated. Uh, so I think in the future, uh, uh, we, you know, we, we may have a tool to determine uh, patients who need to be treated if they have low level of CMV uh, reactivation or who are at risk for progressing either to higher level of reactivation or CMV and organ disease. But still not uh, available, this kind of, uh, there's no commercial available test for CMV specific T cell response for now. It's all done under research or in a research lab. But I think in the future, uh, this can play a role for us uh, to help us uh, determine patient need to be treated or not. Because as I mentioned earlier, probably are over treating this patient that some of them may not need to be treated uh, because their immune system will take care of this uh, low level of uh, reactivation. Currently, uh, most, of our, most of the centers uh, use preemptive uh, strategy uh, to address the CMV uh, infection after uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, uh, what we do is we monitor uh, 
CMV by PCR in the blood uh, or in plasma on a weekly basis, sometimes twice a week in high risk patient. Uh, during the high risk period, which is usually between, I would say, day uh, zero up to day 100 from transplant, and sometimes longer than that if they have, uh, if they acquired some additional risk factors for CMV activation, like Greb versus host disease, or they are on high dose steroids. Uh, so this is the main stretch that we are following now these days. Uh, and uh, as soon as we have a positive test above certain threshold, we start treatment with the drug that I mentioned earlier, which is gencyclovir, valgencyclovir, or foscarnet. The problem with these drugs, uh, we know they are effective. They uh, can, you know, uh, 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 they will have an impact on CMV reactivation, uh, but they are toxic drugs. Gansacrovir, valgansacrovir, we talked about myelosuppression. It could be serious. Patient may lose their graft if you continue treatment uh, with this drug. And foscarnet can cause electrolyte imbalance, also can be serious, as well as nephrotoxicity. So these drugs have uh, many drawbacks, including toxicity, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, that's why we know that we need better strategy uh, and we need better drug, actually. We need safer and effective drug, uh, either prevention or for preemptive therapy or treatment of CMV reactivation.